So again, I have to bring up something that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has said. Um, and that was a couple of days ago, I believe it was a live, live stream she was doing on Twitter where she was talking about whether or not having children can be considered immoral. Now, I think it's been largely misconstrued. First, you have to understand, and this is where I understand, uh, I think I understand she's coming from, and that is that she truly believes, I think, that um, our uh, climate change is going to destroy the planet in the next 10 years or 12 years if we don't do something about it, and that having a whole new generation of children um, that adversely affects the planet, that are consumers, that uh, take up uh, planet uh, resources, and uh, that essentially that they're affecting the people that currently live here and making it worse. So, you know, if you can accept that premise, I, I don't agree with her. I, I also have yet to see, I'm, I'm not a climate change denier, but I am skeptical of many of the things that we are told. One of the things that we're told is the next 10 or 12 years, you know, at least based on the information that she has shared from a recent IPCC report, um, that this is what she thinks. And so she believes that in order to do something about it, we have to follow the plan, if you want to call it that, the issues outlined in the Green New Deal, which is packed with all kinds of things that have nothing to do with, um, with environmental uh, changes and changes to our infrastructure and the way we burn fuels and the way we mass produce things. But one of the things that, uh, so she wants to pay for this, of course, with uh, taxpayer money. And this, this just came up. Um, the, a new report shows Democrats Green New Deal will cost $94 trillion as Ocasio-Cortez tells Americans that having children is immoral. Um, I have to say that, you know, socialism and communism of any kind, you know, are simple redistribution, redistribution of someone else's labors and resources. Um, and so if you don't have enough people that are generating that income, if you don't have enough workers at their shovels, how are you going to pay for this stuff? It's not, first of all, I have, I'm sure that there are exceptions, but largely uh, government expenditures increase over time, even if the people who are using the services government provides decreases. Government generally doesn't get it right. So let's just say that the Green New Deal costs us $50 trillion. Still, how are we going to pay for it if there are fewer and fewer people available to work? to create new businesses, to innovate new ideas that require workers that she can tax in order to pay for these ideas. If we, you know, if there aren't any, um, if there aren't fresh crops of children, if it's determined to be immoral, then we may have a problem. And according to a couple of different studies that we're going to look at right now, um, we might be actually facing that issue right now. America's birth rates are out and they are a disaster. There are now only 59.6 births per 1,000 women, the lowest rate ever recorded in the United States. Some of this decrease is due to um, uh, a steady decline in teenage birth rates, which, uh, congratulations, America, this is a good thing. And I hate to say it, righties, a lot of that is due to uh, providing uh, contraception to um to young, you know, to teenage girls and teenage boys for that matter. It's both responsibility, but, and so those efforts, um, as well as the efforts in, you know, in teaching children abstinence. I have no doubt that the three of them combined are the one, two, three punch that is knocking this thing out. The problem is, is that now we're talking about spending, you know, $93 trillion, $9.3 trillion a year, which is, is far more than the entirety of the, um, of what it is the, the country takes in, in terms of taxes. Um, it's far more than taxing every millionaire and billionaire, uh, you know, 100% of their income is gonna bring in. So, and at the same time, you talk about having fewer children, which means fewer people working for the cause, fewer, fewer people providing their labors and their uh, products of their labor to other people. So what are you gonna do? And right now, I mean, this is really, this is an issue. Um, if we also look, at uh, right now, it's been reported over the last several years now that uh, Japan is having a massive fertility crisis that has um, the it has the economists uh, and the leadership in Japan extremely concerned because as the population gets older, the strain that the older folks put on their social safety nets and their social health care system. Um, 
it it costs them more money. So they so it's just a big pyramid scheme. You know, basically you're collecting from these people so that you can pay for these people. But then when the the money you've collected runs out, you got to keep collecting it to pay for these people. It's it's ridiculous. If you ran your business like that, I believe it's illegal in this country. So an aging population will mean higher costs for the government, a shortage of pension and social security type funds, a shortage of people to care for, the very aged, slow economic growth, and then a shortage of young workers. They call this a demographic time bomb. They are hard to diffuse because they form over years, sometimes decades. In Japan's case, the story begins in the immediate aftermath of World War II. So, and, you know, we can, for example, if we were to look at what's happening in uh, Venezuela right now, Venezuela is an oil-rich country, and um, Chavez had actually said, okay, we're going to kick all the private businesses out and... and uh, and I'm, I'm editorializing here. We're going to kick them all out and we're going to turn the oil wealth over to the people and put them in charge of it. You know, like it's real socialism, folks. It's not a, you know, a um, socialist model that was somehow different that, you know, Bernie Sanders and, and Sean Penn had praised when they put it into place. They, in fact, were called 21st century socialism. This time it was going to work. So they, they turn over the oil wealth to the people and, and um, they, they create guaranteed jobs. Guaranteed jobs in Venezuela. Do you know what that looks like? Well, in order to be sure that there's enough guaranteed government jobs for everyone that needs them, they create jobs that are completely unnecessary. I was just watching a video from journalist Tim Poole, who was talking about being in Venezuela, working on, um, I'm presumably a story, he, he got around a lot and, and uh, was present for a, a lot of different uh, uprisings around the world. He's a real journalist. He was talking about the process of simply buying a cellular phone in Venezuela took him several hours because to pick a phone, he needed to talk to one person. That person then had him fill out papers. That person had to take those papers to another person to approve it. Then he was allowed to buy the phone to get the SIM card. That was a different department with a different person and a different set of paperwork. Then to get uh, the uh, airtime and the uh, contract put together, that was another set of people. He said that he spoke to around seven people. Now, this is, of course, anecdotal, but at the same time, it makes perfect sense. There aren't enough jobs in government for people who are going to need jobs, especially when you are taxing people to the point where the people with the most to lose leave. A couple of weeks ago, um, New York Governor uh, Cuomo was saying something like, and I'm paraphrasing, tax the rich. Well, we've done that and we're still running out of money. God forbid the rich leave. A few years ago, uh, President Hollande of, um, of France ran his entire campaign on, yeah, we're going to tax the rich 70% of their income. They left. It screwed him up. He had to change that and lower the taxes again. The wealthiest people in France moved their money somewhere else, and this is what they're going to do. And the second that you do what they did in Venezuela, which was make it illegal for you to do what you want with your money, then, then the collapse begins because you have parallel economies. You cannot do that. So for Cortez to say that, you know, we're going to pay for all of this, it's going to save the earth, um, but at the same time, having kids might be illegal, she might want to rethink her entire premise. You have to have living, healthy bodies to generate the money that she needs to take away in order to implement the programs that she thinks are right and moral. Going to have another video later on today. I'm going to try and do as many of these, you know, eight or nine minute videos as I can as I think of ideas to discuss. As always, if you think I've gotten something wrong here, if uh, I've mischaracterized something or if I've missed something, please let me know. You can reach me at skeptic at theskeptictank.com. You can find us on Twitter at Skeptic Tank Show and uh, on Facebook at Skeptic Tank Show. Until next time. And you know it!